Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Our guest is Dr. Juan Rivera. He is uh, the author of The Mojito Diet, trained at Johns Hopkins. I always wondered about that, Johns Hopkins, but that's another story. One of the oldest schools in the country. I think it's Uh, two last names. Is is that what it is? Oh, okay. Not a first guy? Eh, Whatever. Anyway, um, there's, uh, you know, two weeks... Four mojitos and a whole new you. You can drop some weight with this diet. Um, I, uh, I'm not a big fan of traditional Mexican food. I think you do. You, you do. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a native uh, Californian, that's really terrible. But I love Cuban food. And there's a, Cuban, a couple of Cuban restaurants in the, the Burbank area that, uh, that we do go to. Um, the the uh, on the other hand, some of the foods from Cuba, Mexico, South America are are potentially uh, heavily fat laden, and uh, and not with the good kind of fat. In the book, do you address that at all? So that's an interesting uh, point for two reasons. If you're talking about food in the United States, uh, quote-unquote Hispanic food in the United States, uh, there's a lot of processed food. And you're going to restaurants and eating, you mentioned Cuban restaurants, you would go to a Cuban restaurant and have white rice and uh, frijoles or the black beans and vaca frita, which is pretty much fried meat, right? Right. That is definitely not mojito diet approved. especially during the first week, because I don't want individuals to uh, be eating rice or bread or pasta during that first week of the mojito diet. So, um, obviously, the recipes that we have in the book are, are inspired to a certain extent in Latin cuisine, but modified so they can be healthy. Now, the other point I want to make is that when you look at the data, Mark, Hispanics that move from Latin America to the United States Actually, uh, health indicators tell tell us that they were doing okay in their countries, eating uh, fresh food, uh, eating healthier, going to the market to get food on a daily basis. And when they come to the United States, they eat extremely uh, more processed food. They eat American food, and yeah, they, and they, that's they adopt that diet, right. and then their health indicators go south. And that's also true of Asians, uh, uh, Asian people, Indian people. People come to the U.S. and they want to assimilate, I suppose, to a certain extent, and they eat the junk food that, you know, that has become the staple of the American diet. I mean, I, I've traveled all over Latin America, and very difficult to find the fast food in Guatemala or El Salvador or you know, those uh, uh, countries. So mm-hmm. they're eating healthier. Yeah, down there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. in the in the, in the in the south. Uh, I would say I would say the only exception because we know the obesity rates are extremely high uh, are in Mexico. I mean we have the worst rates of childhood obesity, for example, in Mexico. And that's probably because it's a poorer country and they're eating a lot of carbs and uh uh, a lot more carbs, the rice and the frijoles, the beans yes, that you're talking yes. about. We only have a moment or two left, and we, we really should address the fact that there is some connection to having alcohol and heart health. I mean, in moderation, can alcohol be a positive in one's life? So if you do it in moderation, especially like I tell individuals to do it in the mojito diet, it vasodilates the arteries in our body, and that helps control blood pressure. Also, uh, it increases good cholesterol when you do it in moderation. Now, the problem with alcohol is that if you abuse it, if you are drinking too much, then arteries in our body are going to basically constrict and blood pressure is going to go up and triglycerides are going to go up. So in moderation, it can be beneficial, but uh, if it's abused, then 
definitely will lead to bad health consequences. Well, uh, Dr. Wan, thank you very much for uh, joining us here on Late Night Health. We we really appreciate it. Looking at your photos, I can see that uh, your BMI index is zero fat, and um, <laughs> we are uh, envious of of that. Did you see that? Looks like Pitbull. He does. He looks like a... <laughs> yeah, he does. Come on, you have... You have, you have solid abs there, uh, Doc. Uh, listen, everybody, uh, visit uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Rivera at mojitodiet.com. Join us at latenighthealth.com. We'll have a link to that as well. Well, that wraps up this edition of Late Night Health. We appreciate Dr. Rivera for being here, and we appreciate you as well. Join us at latenighthealth.com. Have a great week, everybody. Have a good week, and most importantly, have a healthy week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging, parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308